Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the operating section of the cash flow statement using the direct method. This topic is covered in intermediate accounting, the CPA exam section, and this exercise could be used as a CPA simulation, and I will explain why as we work the problem. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, tax, and Excel lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. So share the wealth, subscribe, connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education and or pass your CPA exam. I have plenty of resources. So if you're looking for those 7 to 10 points or 15 points, I will be happy to help you get over your CPA exam. The prerequisite for this session is in the description if you'd like to learn about the direct method, although I, although as I'm working this exercise, I will explain the concept as well. So to work this exercise, I'm going to have a balance sheet, a two-year comparative balance sheet, although it's not complete because I'm only working the operating section. I'm going to have an income statement. I'm going to have the credit balances for the allowance, the depreciation for the equipment in the building, and the accounts payable as well as additional data. This is what I'm going to be working with. And the question that could be asked on the CPA exam is, or on the CPA simulation is compute the operating section of the cash flow statement using the direct method. So what is the direct method? Simply put, the direct method is taking the income statement, which is the accrual income statement, and converting the accrual income statement into a cash income statement. So here's the accrual income statement. And I need to convert this into cash. Now, on the exam, to make this as a simulation, rather than just giving you the figures, they can give you exhibits. And I will tell you in a moment what, what do I mean by exhibit. Because when it comes to CPA simulations, the CPA simulations are the same information as an exercise, except that this exercise is given to you, is presented to, to, presented to you in a real world situation. And I will tell you how and when we look at this. So. So to start this process, we need to look at sales revenue, which is 950,000. And we need to convert sales revenue into, we need to convert sales revenue into cash received from customers. Well, how do I know how much cash did I receive from customers? I know my sales revenue is 950, but that's an accrual number. Because remember, the income statement is accrual. How do I know what's my sales revenue? Well, to know my sales revenue, I have to examine my account receivable to see what happened to my account receivable overall as far as the year is concerned. So let's examine account receivable and see what happened. Our account receivable throughout the year went up from 130,000 to 155. Notice the balance was 130, now it's 155. Now throughout the year, we did collect a lot of money we did sold a lot on account but the net change as we see the net change is 25,000 it means overall we sold more on account than we collected cash well how is that gonna affect the 950 well if we're saying we're reporting 950 in sales but our account receivable went up it means part of that 950 is on account how much of it on account is 25,000 how did I know 25,000 is on account? Because my account receivable, my account receivable went up. My account receivable went up. It means my cash sales is only 925,000. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to convert sales into cash received from customers. So cash received from customers is 900 and 25,000 although my accrual sales is 950 the reason it's less because my account receivable went up if my account receivable went down it means I collected more cash from customers if I collected more cash from customers then I would have added this number to the 950 but since my account receivable went up it means overall I sold more on credit than I collected in cash so practically I'm done with sales I can cross this number out I can cross account receivable. 
let's work with cost of goods sold cost of goods sold is basically payments you made to suppliers now the number here is positive but technically it's a negative negative six hundred thousand but since we are converting this to cash so basically now i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna record my cash payments and part of my cash payments is to suppliers and from the from the uh, income statement it shows that i recorded six hundred thousand it means i spent six hundred thousand technically this is negative technically this is negative okay so six hundred thousand so now i need to convert this number six hundred thousand to how much i actually paid well in order to do so you have to examine two accounts and the, the two accounts are inventory you have to examine inventory and you have to examine accounts payable because what happened is this your suppliers you bought inventory from them and you might bought it on account or you might have paid cash for it so to examine how much what happened is you have to examine those two accounts so you started with six hundred thousand your inventory went up from 61,000 to 75,000. Well, if your inventory went up, it means overall the net change was positive, positive 14. The net change positive 14. Positive 14 means you are purchasing. Well, if you are purchasing, it means you are paying more. Now you might say, what if I bought it on account? Don't worry, I'm gonna make the adjustment for accounts payable in a moment. But all what I know for now, since my inventory went up, that's an additional disbursements of cash because I have more inventory okay so inventory went up I, I I dispersed more cash well let's see how much if I dispersed more cash or if I bought them on account I look at my accounts payable I look at my AP and it went from 60,000 to 66 what does that mean it means the net change was positive 6,000 it means although I bought inventory I also used my credit because my accounts payable went up overall my accounts payable went up it means of the 14,000 6,000 of it was on account it means I did not pay cash for it I did not disperse cash for it therefore if I take negative 600 cost of goods sold starting with examine my inventory which it increased my cash disbursement then when I examine my accounts payable it means I did not pay for it in cash overall I have negative six hundred and eight thousand that I paid to suppliers so for suppliers it's cash payment to suppliers six hundred and eight basically I'm done with cost of goods sold and I'm done with analyzing inventory done with analyzing accounts payable gross profit is basically a total a computation I don't have to worry about this operating expenses include depreciation expense and bad debt expense of 250 now what do we know about depreciation and bad debt what we know about those two accounts they are non cash it means we expense them from an accrual perspective but they don't involve cash well what do I have to do it means cash paid to operate the business is not really 250 accrual is 250 but the cash paid to operate the business should be less than 250 because what's included in this account is two numbers that are non cash now how do I know how much depreciation I took how much how much do I know how much bad that expense I took I have to look at the related balance sheet account the related balance sheet account to bad that expense is allowance and what do I see in my allowance I see my allowance went from 8,000 to 10,000 and what happened is this allowance every time allowance is increased you debit bad that expense you credit allowance you debit so the entry was bad debt expense total of 2000 allowance 2000 okay in other words i recorded 2000 of bad debt expense what does that mean it means of the 250 i'm starting with 250 then 2000 of it was non cash i have to reduce it now i'm down to 248 now i have to back out the depreciation and this is where i can start to turn this into an actual simulation why because I'm, I'm given additional information I'm told that equipment costing ten thousand dollar and was sixty percent depreciated was sold in 2007 now what I can do other rather than give you this this information I can give you two things actually three things if I want to I can give you the purchase paperwork so I can tell you when we purchase this equipment I can give you a contract 
I can show you that we purchased this equipment for 10,000, but you have to read this contract to determine how much we paid for it. Then for the 60% depreciation, I don't tell you it was 60% depreciated. I can give you an exhibit that that's that's considered that's that's a depreciation schedule and you have to figure out that it was sold in 2017 60% was depreciated so rather than give you the statement i can give you two different exhibit that are pretty scary but they're nothing they're just if you know what you're doing it's just okay i purchased it for 10000 that's my cost when i sold it it was 60% depreciated now why this is important why do i have to examine this because now i have to determine how much depreciation i took so this was for the equipment so here i have depreciation for the equipment and depreciated for the building the building i didn't do anything with the building my depreciation of the building went from twenty-eight thousand to thirty-seven thousand. it means for the building i booked depreciation of nine thousand so simply put i can just say i'm going to reduce nine thousand for the depreciation of the building why because this is for this account only so I'm, I'm breaking down the depreciation into two components just to show you step by step. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, let me get my calculator here and start to look at this. So we have uh, 248 minus 9,000. So now we're down to 239. Now I have to determine what happened to this account, the equipment. Why? why the equipment is important it's because i sold a piece of equipment so the deep let's let's examine the depreciation for the equipment accumulated depreciation what we are told for the accumulated depreciation we started at 14 and we end up with 21. now what the classic mistake is is to say well it's seven thousand increase therefore I took 7,000 of depreciation. Not really. Why? Because what happened in this account, the net change was 7,000, but what really happened, I removed one of the assets, and as a result, when you remove the asset, you remove its accumulated depreciation. So what happened is 6,000 was debited to accumulated depreciation dash equipment, this account, because I sold the equipment. So now, I, to find out how much depreciation I took, I have to start with 14,000, add to it i'm sorry deduct from it six thousand because this is basically a debit is a deduction for depreciation i have to duck to deduct from it six thousand then to find out the difference the difference to 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 bring me to twenty one thousand so if i took so if i took fourteen thousand fourteen not seventeen fourteen thousand and i deducted six thousand that's gonna give me eight thousand but somehow my my accumulated depreciation is 21 it means what's the difference between 21 and 8 that's 13000 it means i booked a depreciation expense of 13000 what does that mean it means there is an additional depreciation expense of 13000 it means here i have to deduct i have to deduct 13000 for the equipment the equipment account depreciation and this was for the building was easy there was nothing no changes in the building now i'm going to take 239 minus 13000 and that's going to give me 226000 and i i believe that's all what i need to do to convert my my uh, my uh, operating expenses into cash i started at 250 and I backed out first the bad debt, that was easy. Then I backed out the building, that was easy. And for the equipment, I had to be very careful because I sold one of the equipment. So this is how they can trick you. So to operate the business, I paid 226000 So notice I could have, you know, I turned this into a simulation just to tell you, you know, how easy you can, you know, make it more complicated. So so income from operation i don't have to worry about this gain on the sale of investment remember gains are non-cash revenue therefore I, you cannot convert something non-cash to cash losses they are like non-cash expenses like non-cash expenses they are non-cash you don't have to worry about them so when you're doing the direct method gains and losses they don't need any adjustments the direct method remember the indirect method you deduct the gain and you add the loss and if you want to know why view my you know 
indirect method, but we're looking here at the direct method. So income before losses, that's a number, that's a computation. Income taxes. I'm told my income taxes on the income statement is 45000 Now what I have to do, I have to examine my income tax expense. I'm sorry, this is income tax expense. I have to look at my income taxes payable. And I'm just going to make up this number to tell you what happened to income taxes payable. So income taxes payable, again, this is, I'm going to add this information. And I'm going to tell you that income taxes payable went from, um, so we have year 2017 and 2016. I'm going to tell you that it went from 10000 to 12000 Income taxes payable. This is income taxes. So this account is income taxes payable that went from 10 to 12 what does that mean it means my income taxes payable increased by 2000 well what does that mean it means of the 45000 here's what happened to this 45000 i have 45000 of income tax expense here's what happened i debited income tax expense 43000 Credited cash, 43000 I debited income tax expense to, and I credited income tax payable, 2000 So this income tax expense, 43, this income tax expense of two, those two gave me the 45000 on my income statement. How, how did I know that an additional 2000 was not paid because my income taxes payable went up, so it must have been a net change of 2000 And this is how I came up with the second entry, because my income taxes payable went up. Okay, what does that mean? It means although I recorded 45000 on my income statement, so 45000 on my income statement, how much did I really pay? I only paid 43. I only paid 43. How did I know I only paid 43? Because my income taxes payable went up by 2000 so the third component to, to kind of um, to, uh, to convert to convert so we converted what we paid the suppliers we converted what we paid to operate the business the third component is income taxes paid to I'm just gonna call it IRS 43,000 doesn't have to be the IRS it could be the state the local government it doesn't matter now I can compute my net cash either provided or used but it look it's provided it's more so 925 so basically i'm going to take 925000 minus 226 minus 43 and my net cash provided uh, from business i'm sorry minus 608 i didn't do that 925 minus 608 minus 226 minus 43 and net cash provided is 48,000. So this is net cash provided, 48,000, which is positive. But notice here the in net income was 67, net income was 67, cash provided is 48. So this is the direct method uh, of preparing the statement of cash flow. Why is this important? Why is this uh, example is important? Because it helped you convert from cash from accrual to cash sometimes you have to go from cash to accrual make sure you are familiar with this as always i would like to remind you to like the lecture visit my website if you're looking for those 10 to 15 points on the cpa exam by all means check out my website for the additional resources good luck study hard and stay safe especially during those coronavirus days